Hey, Jamie. <laughs> yeah? I created something special for you for the opening for our show. <gasps> you ready? Yeah. You got to promise not to laugh. Okay. That wasn't convincing, Jamie. <laughs> You're going to laugh. <laughs> See, I told you. All right, you ready? Yeah. If I had a camera, I'd shoot it in the morning. I'd shoot it in the evening. Whenever I can, I take pictures of bumblebees. I take pictures in black and white. What do you think? <laughs> Not a bad start, is it? Not a bad start. No. Just need some piano in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Spanning the globe to bring great photographers and their experiences directly to you. It's 8 p.m. in Japan, 1 p.m. in Spain, and high noon in our guest's home in the U.K. That means it's time for the Camera Cafe Show, brought to you by photographers Tom Jacob and Dave Payne. Hello there, amigo. Would you like to welcome our special guests and introduce them to our listeners? Evening, Dave, and welcome first, everyone, to yet another episode of our podcast, and boy, do we have something special today on the other side of the microphone, sitting at her home. I'm sure she's already giggling now and in the mood to stun you all with her photography knowledge. So everybody, be warned, you will fall in love with her before our show is over. I'm talking, of course, about the amazing Jamie, a.k.a. Eagle-Eyed Girl, one of the youngest nature photographers I know and stunning us with her work on social media every day. Jamie lives in Wales is only seven years old and talks about photography as it comes natural, like riding a bike for other kids. With us today here with her amazing father, James. And just to show you all at home listening that she's one cool photographer, this is a quick summary of some of her recent photography contest awards. Montgomery Wildlife Trust Photography Competition 2022, highly recommended for flower photography. First place in the category pet photography under 18, RSPCA 2022, runner-up in the under-12 category, RSPCA 2022, commended in the pet personality category, RSPCA 2022, shortlisted in the Young Kupoti 2022 in close-up of the year, Kuan Wildlife Calendar Competition 2022, April winning image, and just now this week, the Royal Entomology Society under-18 specially commended, so she's by all accounts somebody you need to know. Let's get the ball rolling and move the mic over to Jamie and her dad. How are you guys there? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. Oh, thanks guys for coming on, on the show, both of you. How's the how's the weather there in Wales to get some photography sunny, done? Sunny, sunny, nice, sunny. Nice and sunny, isn't it's it? It's a beautiful Perfect spring day. Yeah. <laughs> so you the went out already to make pictures or, or you had to study first, Jamie? Hmm. Have you done pictures today? No. No, not really. Not today. We did some pictures yesterday at Letley Wetlands Centre. Mm, I thought so you can go out one day without shooting pictures, no? <laughs> no, can't go without one day shooting pictures. We actually <laughs> did a bit of macro photography of bees, didn't we? Yeah. And always, I always go to the gift shop at the end, always. <laughs> Excellent. So I bought a bumblebee. <laughs> A big bumblebee. A massive bumblebee. Yeah, yeah, a massive bumblebee, and he's called Bumble. Do you want to say hello, Bumble? Hello, guys. This is Bumble the Bumblebee speaking for the podcast. <laughs> you have him there She's with you. She's got her priorities straight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jamie, tell me, tell us a bit about yourself and how you decided to come to become this famous wildlife photographer now. Well, I started using some binoculars at a lake and they weren't focusing as quick as I wanted to, them to. So Dad asked, it, asked if I want to use a camera, but I didn't want to drop the camera because I knew how expensive it was. So then Dad said, try it out. So we went outside and I was trying to get some photos of the, sparrow in the sparrows in the bush. And then we went around the garden getting other photos. And I, I got better and better from then. Then we put feeders up, attracted rarer birds in, more birds in. And not just birds, we got great crested newts in our pond. We attracted loads of wildlife in and I got better and better photos. And we entered them in more and more competitions. And 
yeah, we just worked f- worked from there, really. And how hard was it, Jamie, to to get you you shoot with Nikon, no? Yeah. Yeah, I shoot with Nikon. Okay, and how hard was it to to learn it at your age? Well, I, when I first started doing photography, I was really wobbly because I'm not used to the weight of the camera. But I got I got steadier and steadier when every single time I used it because I got more used to it, more used to the weight of the camera. So it wasn't it was quite tricky to start with because I wasn't used to looking through a lens, trying to get the sparrows because they were so quick. And yeah, so I got better and better really and it got easier and easier taking photos of birds in flight and no matter how fast they are. I I got a peregrine falcon in flight once. That's that, that's pretty c- cool for me. So the obvious question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would like to be a wildlife presenter and photographer. Ah. Is really my main thing. Which you're already doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she started very early. Yeah. So you're you're seven or eight now, Jim? I'm seven. I started taking photos when I was six last year in March, but now I'm seven and I really like taking photos. Mm. Got a long way to go. Yeah. So mm-hmm. who 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 lifts up the Z nine with the four hundred millimeter lens? Um I'm not sure. You can lift it, yeah? You can lift oh, it. Oh I can lift it. I can definitely lift it because for my early ber- birthday present, I had a 600mm lens and I'm seeming to hold that very well. Yeah, you can hold yeah. that, no problem. You can yeah, hold that. Yeah, with the Z9 and the 600mm, it's the Sigma 150 to 600. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And uh, yeah, she holds that really well. I, I I thought it's not a bad weight, you know. When when I first had it, it was a bit quite heavy because I wasn't used to that sort of weight. But I got better and better at it, really, and just got used to it and got m- muscles, didn't I? Yeah, you're getting a lot stronger. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. So I started, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Started from there. Jamie, only seven years old, already award-winning, yeah. What do you think are your next photography challenges now? Well, I would probably say trying to get some more macro shots of the newts in our pond or more macro shots of all the bees we've got here, more macro shots of insects and their secret worlds, really, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be her first spring because uh, it's just a year now she's been taking photos. Yeah, March last year so I started. So we're trying to take the, make the most of this spring to... Uh, See the, the nature coming back, the bees are waking up, the flowers yeah. are opening. So it's a new experience now with your experience with the camera. You can yeah. get out there and definitely, definitely en- enjoy this experience. spring, really, when there's so much activity. Yeah. It's easier, Jamie, to get a kite or get a bee in focus? Ooh, well, I would roughly say they're both sort of the same, really, because I... Start getting folks with kites. I never thought of doing the bees, but when you actually look at a bee close up or a wasp or a hornet, actually quite cool how how fluffy they are and how cute they look, and their eyes really glow up. I remember getting a fly once, and you could see all the lenses in its eye. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. So, what you consider, Jamie, to be the two or three most important requirements for someone to be successful uh, as a wildlife photographer? Well, what I would say is if you're interested in doing photography, I would say start putting out bird feeders or or some flowers or whatever you want to get a photo of. Put out what it likes to eat. And then when it's used to coming back and forth to your garden... Then try and get, make sure it gets used to you, make sure it gets used to the camera, and then try and get photos of it. And if you're not really happy with the photos, it's fine. Because if you've done 10,000 images of of a, a bee or a flower or something and you've only got one, that's fine. That's completely fine. It doesn't matter how, how what you see in the camera or how you want it. It's just how what you attract in and how you would like to get it and what you see in the lens. And if you capture a really nice photo, that's that's completely fine. So just work from there and you, you'll be pretty good. Okay. Is there 
Jamie a place or an animal you would really, really, really get to go or, or get a picture of? Um, I would say it's probably probably really nice to get a photo of a really, really rare bird. Jamie? Yeah, going to Scotland would probably be one. Going to Scotland, getting some crossbills, some crested tits maybe. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Or puffins. Yeah, or puffins, because yeah. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've actually booked a mini adventure to go to Skomer Island, so let's hope we get some nice photos there. Jamie, got a quick question for you. Which do you think is easier to shoot, birds in flight or bees in flight? Oh, they're both quite tricky, actually. Well, it depends how how slow or fast the bird is. Because it, cause it's a per, if it's a peregrine falcon, good luck. That's all I'm saying. Because they're the <laughs> they're almost the fastest bird in the world. So good luck getting a photo of them. But if you're going for some a bee that's quite slow, then you probably get a pretty good image. But it um, it depends how many flowers are around you because if there's a flower right next to a flower, then the bee only has a short distance. So it'd be quite tricky to get. But if it's got a long distance, then it's probably easier because you've got more time to get a photo of the bee. But I'd probably say both are quite similar. So it depends what you want to get, really. And if it's something tricky, then try. I sh- I'm sure you read a lot of uh, nature books and you are yeah, very definitely. interested in nature all, all the time. How you see nature conservation for you and for photographers? Is that something you are personally active in? Yeah, I would say we're really active in conservation at the moment because we need more farmland for the curlews. We need we need more places for other wildlife. So... M- I one day we were trying to get photos of hares and I saw this wheat here on a rock and the rock was surrounded by garbage and I got the foot image and I thought that's a good conservation image because we've done a mini documentary on the curlew so let's hope that helps as well. It's a shame they're going to put pylons and wind turbines in it, mind. Yeah? Yeah, they're going to put huge pylons and huge wind turbines in yeah, there's plans for um, some massive, huge inland t- turbines to be planted on the hills and uh, large pylons to carry the electricity. So it's going to just dis- disrupt the landscape, isn't it? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of this. It's, uh, it's up, it... up in arms, the villages. And... Yeah. Because there's not much left. No, there's not much left at all. And not good for the birds neither, I suppose, no? No, not good for the wildlife. It confuses where the bees are going to go as well. And it, they have to put concrete up, down, and that destroys a lot of the wildlife that lives in that important habitat, really. And it's sad to see it go because there's not much left. It's why it's, it's important, a- Jamie, we make pictures. So yeah. people, they start loving them. It's why I think I also started posting uh, micro pictures of, of people they get scared of spiders. or, But you you need to give them another way of seeing them. They are important for the planet. Yeah, they are. They're really important. I mean, without bugs, there's no people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those bugs were here long before we were, and they deserve to be here long after we're gone, yeah. so we better start helping them out. Yeah. yeah. Well said, Jamie. Well said. I hope everybody is listening. James, a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you're in a unique situation with... Jamie really is a photography prodigy <laughs> yeah. living under your roof. <laughs> yeah. Can you share with our listeners who have children showing an interest in photography, what are two or three things parents should consider doing to foster and grow their children's photography interest? Um, I would think you really need to think of what they're passionate about. If it's photography, then maybe narrow that down to insects, birds, macro, wildlife, even landscape. Um, And if you haven't got any knowledge in photography, then possibly ask at local clubs, um, ask other photographers, you know, do do a bit of research on uh, on how to progress that 
and they and, and really help with their uh, with their next steps. Um, I'm always online doing research, you know, finding the cheapest uh, deal we can get on a maybe a new lens or yeah. or the next camera or something just to help uh, progress to the next stage. Uh, we're, we're not we're not flush with money or anything, but uh, uh, it's definitely you have to find uh, you got a penny pinch most of the time. And unfortunately, photography isn't the cheapest hobby in the world. No. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you just got and, and immerse yourself in that uh, environment. Uh, is the best way of learning, really. And with, you know, with Jamie, we're involved and we're there, we're show, showing her, teaching her um, and, and have fun together, learning along the way. Um, and there's no pressure. You know, yeah. if, if one day she doesn't want to take photos or a couple of days, that's fine. Um, just be a normal kid and have fun. You know, it's, it's, it's all about fun. Life's too serious as it is. Um, and children are only children for so long. So uh, they haven't got the worries of life that we have the mortgages, the bills and all that sort of thing. And that's what's really nice and precious about uh, her photography. Uh, there's just concentration on the, on that particular subject at that time and nothing else. And I think that shows through her photography, but make it fun. Uh, do some, go on to your own adventures, quizzes, drawings, paintings. Uh, you know, we, we're always crawling around in the mud, in the moorland, uh, belly, <laughs> trying to get close to a hair or something, you know, uh, we're there, you know, and try and give up any of your spare time to uh, to help. Um, and that really makes a difference. Hanging pictures on the wall of her prints, sitting down together, editing photos, you know, just spending time going through things. Uh, and the reward you'll get is unbelievable. You know, uh, when she discovers a new, uh, a new bird or something on an adventure or sees something that's amazing, the smile and the enthusiasm that comes through is, it, it pays it's amazing. It is amazing. How long have you been shooting, Jamie? Or uh, James, excuse me. Yeah, no, I've um, I've always been into photography since a young age, since Jamie, but never had the funding or anything, you know, didn't have any spare cash lying around to uh, to afford expensive equipment. So uh, it was back in the day using the portable click cameras uh, at weddings and, and things. But I was, hope I was lucky enough to do one year's course after high school uh, in photography, and that really opened my eyes to um, how how to develop film, black and white, uh, using the, all the, the chemicals and, and in the dark room and experimenting. Is I think that was uh, the real eye opener for me when I first bought my film camera, uh, which, which which was a Nikon. So I just progressed from there because I'm I'm a carpenter by trade, so I'm not a photographer by any means, no. uh, but a, a real amateur. But uh, yeah, you know, it's just fun and passion and 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 go from there, really. Oh, it's logical because as a carpenter, you have to depend on your tools. Yeah, you, you always need a tool Same with job. photography. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Having Jamie shooting as wonderfully as she is, James, have you found that to be a motivation for you and your photography? Yeah, I don't really do much photography anymore i'm trying to concentrate on more of the filming because jamie we, we really enjoy doing the curly documentary as she mentioned um so i'm trying to teach myself uh how to film better and different camera angles and things to try and put the message across for conservation and different birds that need help um so i'm concentrating more on the film side at the moment well tom should be able to help you uh with that with his film and documentary experience yeah that'd be good there you go, <laughs> Yeah, that'd be really good. Got a good. couple of lessons coming up in the yeah. mix of this. But she's taught me so much. Uh, you know, we've learned as a family together about nature in the last year. Um, and, yeah, it's she She is. It's, you make a saying up, don't you? I've swallowed a bird book every yeah. time I think <laughs> of a really rare bird. She's always doing her own research and bringing up information on the on the iPad, finding her own uh, little, little... The Welsh names for birds, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the Welsh name for birds. Any any little bit that she can find on a certain bird or animal, you're it's, there, isn't you? It's going in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was wondering about that, Jamie. Is there a story or a picture just before you go to bed, you think about and you say, wow, that was amazing. I, I want to do that again? Yeah, probably, actually. Yeah, there is a photo. Because I remember going to Slimbridge once and we went in the water ale hide and we... It was in the winter and we were looking around thinking, oh, that's a moor hen. We looked at it again, looked at it again. It's not a moor hen, it's a water rail. <laughs> so I was going mad 
because I was getting so many photos of that water. But then he went across the water, so he was swimming. And that was only for roughly three seconds, and I managed to get an amazing photo. I mean, it's a it's an RS, RSPCA photographer winner, <laughs> <laughs> to my eyes, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it was probably the water ale. That's really good. Jamie, a question for you about equipment. You mentioned you're going into macro. Yes, What I camera am. body are you shooting with? currently and what macro lens have you got so we are using the nikon 105 macro and we are using the nikon z9 and if you add those two together you get pretty crisp photos i mean a photo of the of a bee with that lens is amazing it's pretty good lens that and body sounds like a winning combination to me hmm <laughs> Yeah, definitely. There's one last question that I'd like to put to both of you, Jamie and James, and it's this. For people who are already into wildlife photography, what is one thing you'd recommend they should start doing, one thing they should stop doing, and why? Go on, Dad. Yeah, you go first. Go oh, I can go you, first. He's much better at talking than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so what I sh- would say you should stop doing is you should stop letting yourself down because if you, if you see a really good photo in your head and you haven't made it out, that probably might upset you a bit, but don't let, don't let that put you down. Don't let failing put you down. Keep trying and trying. Do not give up. That's one thing I would say to stop doing, isn't it? Stop failing. Stop thinking you're going to fail. Just keep carrying on. Keep fighting. You'll get the image in the end. And one thing you should start doing is probably putting up feeders, allowing birds to come in your garden and get some good, really good photos. And if you've got a really good photo, show it to your mum and dad. And that'd be pretty, pretty good if you can get a really nice photo of a bird or an insect or a flower. I would say that's what you should start doing, what you should stop doing. Well, good advice. A follow-up for you, Jamie. Yeah. If someone came up to you and said, Jamie Smart, (laughs) what is the one thing that you most love about photography? What would you say? I would say it's definitely, because if you look at a bee or something, you think, oh, it's just a bee, but when you get it through a camera... It shows you a different side of the bee. It shows you the bee's life. It's the sh- same with birds. It shows you more of the bird. So if you look, if you look down a lens, you can see some quite pretty amazing things sometimes. So you, c- if you, if you can capture something that people don't usually see, that'd be pretty good. I would say. Wonderful. I know the feeling. I was chasing a bee today in a rose garden here in Japan. He wasn't cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> he was the size of a B-2 bomber. It's the biggest bee I think I've ever seen. And I was chasing him through the garden. And is it I my, swear... Is it my bee called Bumble? <laughs> Did he come and visit you today? This, you know, I think it may have been a carpenter bee. It's ah. the biggest bee I've seen here. Mm. And I swear, for one minute, I thought he looked over his shoulder at me and was laughing as he zoomed away. (laughs) But I'm going back there tomorrow. Yeah, fight the bee again. Never give up. I'll have that (laughs) bee. Jamie, I was wondering, if you get friends over... And they are really interested in maybe starting photography. You take out your camera, you show them. How would you go on explaining it to them in an easy way, how to shoot? Okay. Well, if I got my camera out, obviously I would take a photo with it. And I would show them the photo and they go, wow, how would you do that? So what I would say to them is I get my camera. I get my right lens. Now, the right lens 
you need the right lens because if you might need a 600 mil lens, an 800 mil, 105 macro, whatever lens you need, you're gonna have to try and use it because we we've got a lens that goes to a 24 to 120, haven't we, mil? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we call it the puffing lens because we're keeping it for scoma. So if we're doing something like a dog or something, we would probably use that lens. So I would say to, to the right body, to the right lens. And if you want to do something... And the settings. And the settings, yes. Go through the settings you need. Yeah, Daddy was thinking of buying a T-shirt saying, check your settings. <laughs> so, you, so you would be good explaining them the settings, Jamie? Yeah. So explain yeah. some more of the settings. Because if it's a really sunny day and you're trying to get swallows, 2000 F4 would be pretty good. And if you're trying to do something really close up and that you'd only have many lines of focus, so up your f-stop to roughly f7.1 f8 maybe 10 10 whatever you need whatever you need and if it's really really dark and you're trying to get something like that you'd have to use a flash obviously but you would also need a low shutter speed and a low f-stop because if it's too high you'll get a grainy image which grain is just mini specs that don't make it as sharp as you want it to be and an iso that's through the roof <laughs> yeah you're gonna you bring that they... iso down don't you yeah dave i'm going to sign up for her workshop i think <laughs> <laughs> you know i you took the words right out of my mouth i was going to say and and when's the next opening you've got in your photography basics workshop <laughs> <laughs> i think you might have to set up a program i think <laughs> I, yeah i think i just good. learned something there you go yeah that's good so jamie based on what you just said yeah i'm going after that giant bee tomorrow okay what do you and it's supposed to be sunny so what do you think i should use for shutter speed and aperture Oh, okay. So if you if the B is quite fast, as I think I know it is, you'd have to do roughly 2,000, 1,000, maybe 1,600. And shutter speed-wise, so it, it, will, it will The aperture keep is down the F-stop. A bit. F-stop. Yeah. So what F-stop would you put it at? F-stop, if you want to get the whole B in focus... F four five maybe up a bit eight maybe nine seven point one six point three maybe maybe yeah, those this... shutter speeds and f stops really. You're experiment, haven't you? Yeah, because you've got yeah. to experiment. Because if it's the wrong, because literally what you have to do is you have to pick a shutter speed, pick an f stop, take a photo of the B, see if it's crisp see if it's how you want it to be if it isn't change the settings again and just keep changing the settings and trying and trying and trying and trying until you get that perfect image you're looking at today i think i learned all the f-stops and shutter speeds not to use <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. do you get any ones tomorrow. that you need to use <laughs> oh, i'm gonna going change the to lens too so yeah he's going back tomorrow yeah, try change, again change lenses because it also, you need to bring a camera bag sometimes with different lenses because you don't know what you're going to find because you need the macro lens, don't you? You need a bird lens. You need quite a few lenses. Mm, <laughs> yeah. And somebody to yeah. carry them would be nice. Mm, that's the donkey. <laughs> uh, today was them. today was the macro lens. Tomorrow's going to be the 50 to 230 millimeter telephoto okay. so I can pick him up farther away and stay with him longer. Cross your fingers and wish me luck, Jamie. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, but we have an upcoming episode planned with uh, me and Paul about macro photography. Right. And I think the number one tip there is already stay still. We, yeah. We, we don't move, you, we don't chase bees. You no. just pick a nice flower, the flower you like for your picture. And then wait Stay for there. a bee to land on it. They will come, yeah. Just <laughs> focus if there. We, if you're using a low shutter speed as well, you need to be really steady. If it's something like one 160, you need to be. You you probably need a tripod. Yes, but there it goes. My tip number two: secret, secret. Always use a flash. Mm. Jamie, yes. In macro photography. 
Yeah. We we put we found some bees, didn't we, and other creatures, and put them on. What was it? Yeah, we called? did. Yeah, we found some caterpillars, on it? Yeah, caterpillars, bees, ladybirds. Yeah. But I'm never, ever, ever going to do a stink bug ever again. <laughs> he honked the wow. whole room out. <laughs> He, he stinks. He stinks that <laughs> he little stink. stink bug. As yeah. soon as you get a, a flash photo of him, that's it. You need to put him back in the pot and outside immediately ASAP. Yeah. He stinks. <laughs> well, that's what I call stink bugs. Yeah, I know. Have you seen the curlew? Have you seen my curlew documentary? I saw it. Yes, I contacted your father after seeing it. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was <laughs> something that we thought of afterwards uh, with some. I think it was the T500 footage that was, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. It was some old footage that we had. Um, and we just pieced it together and just went for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. So you guys are going, you're going to do more of these? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely going to do more documentaries. Yeah, she really enjoyed the filming, the aspect, the whole thing. The, um... Yeah, I liked the commentating, didn't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, reading and researching, obviously, the animal. and Yeah, researching. the curly. Going out on mini adventures and trying to... Yeah, trying to find more, them and more get footage. more footage. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I think that's the way forward. She enjoys every aspect. So, and in the, in in on those little adventures as well, she gets to take new images, uh, new experiences. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think uh, it's on the cards to do a few more. I think yeah. she's way too excited to go to sleep at night. No. Yeah. <laughs> All no, these things you guys are doing. <laughs> she doesn't sleep that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She's better now. But uh, yeah. <sighs> Jamie, we certainly had fun today. Did you yeah, have a yeah. good time? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Uh, I, I, I was so excited. I was telling Dad to rush, keep rushing because I thought it was quite quickly. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thanks so much, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for bringing us on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, take care and, and see your pictures tomorrow, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, see what we put on. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Wow. Just an amazing, wonderful, and funny interview with Jamie and James. Thank you guys so much. It's amazing for me to hear someone that's that young talk so passionate about making pictures and, and wildlife, Dave, and having the knowledge behind it too. Excellent job, James, on teaching her how to see. How marvelous our planet is, and we need between young and old to take care of it, each in his own way, right? An amazing little girl, right, Dave? Amazing doesn't begin to cover it. There's a couple of words that came to mind constantly as I listened to her. One was just passion for photography. Her passion comes through. The other thing that I was really moved by was how fluent she was in the language of photography and not just the language, but actually sharing with us what she did, how she did the settings, Mm -hmm. how she got this. She is just an amazing example of a young photographer that's getting ready to take on the world. And I think people are going to be hearing about her and seeing her work for a long, long time. We'd like to thank Jamie and James Smart for their time and their wonderful insights that they've shared with our listeners today. It's been an amazing conversation. We leave you with a quote that's custom made for wildlife photography from the photographer Piet Hoxma, who said, it is up to the viewers to understand that it is worth preserving this natural world as it is important for the survival of our world and thus for the generations to come. Thank you for listening. And now pick up your camera, get out there, and create some amazing wildlife photos. 